Hi, this is Michael Kohler with Coral Castle Explained, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about the Florida table here. Before I talk about it, I'd like to point out a few things in the background here. This is the Polaris telescope, uh, which uh, Ed put up. This is the eyepiece for it, which is a triangular piece, which was actually cut out of the crown, what Ed called the crown on the north wall here. Um, you have the moon fountain in the back and the throne room here here in the back ground behind the tree and here you have the uh, rocking chairs that surround the Florida table and of the many unique artifacts that uh, Ed brought up with him from Florida City to Homestead uh, one of the more amazing pieces is this Florida table Ed created this table in roughly the same shape as the state of Florida. Its size and shape are actually in direct proportion, even including Le Lake Ochechobee. This lake is actually the largest lake in Florida and with its um, positioning, as you can see here, on the Florida table, it's almost in the exact right spot. And as with several other items um, that Ed made, including the porridge bowl in the Grotto of the Three Bears, which he made for the children that would visit. It is cemented in so it could be used for a variety of purposes. Um, it could have been a bird bath, a punch bowl, um, who knows? Cement is also a common theme uh, that is throughout the Coral Castle on specific pieces, but we'll discuss that in another video. Around the table, there are many rocking chairs that Ed carved out of the layered oolite coral from Florida City. As you can see here around the table. Each one of these weighs about a half a ton or a thousand pounds. And it was said that when Ed would give a tour he would show off sometimes by going to all of the rocking chairs around the table and start them rocking one by one. He would simply step on one, get it started, and run around the table doing the same to all of the chairs until he had all of the chairs rocking at the same time. And although this might seem silly, the fact that he actually balanced thousand pound pieces of coral that were cut in the form of chairs so perfectly that he could touch them and get them to rock back and forth um, is a feat of engineering that is amazing in and of itself. The chair that he carved for the head of the table was purportedly for the governor of Florida um, according to Edward, his idea was that he and all of the senators and representatives of the state could sit around the table, rock in the chairs, and figure out ways to raise the taxes of the Floridians. Not such a good idea, I'm thinking. And I'm also thinking this was probably not what Leeds Gallman wanted to do uh, with this several ton slab of coral. What is more important to consider is that this slab of coral was moved up Highway 1 the main road in uh, southern Florida, 10 miles from Florida City to the Homestead location, and that it did not break due to some logistical error or moving error um, from the time it was placed on the flatbed truck until it was positioned as you see it right here. But I think more importantly than the fact that he created this that he moved it here is the ideology behind why he did it. Um, in my opinion, uh, Ed was a showman. He was a showman. He was clearly showing everyone that he had skills in regard to carving, moving, and positioning coral that no one else had. And why would he do that? Well, think about a magician for a second. Like a magician who knows a trick, he will never reveal it because once the secret is known, the trick is no longer amazing. The prestige of the trick is only good for the trick itself. The 1100 tons of coral at what was once called Rock Gate Park was created, in my opinion, by a wizard who died with his secrets within him, but left clues behind in the megalithic structures, including the Florida table, that we see at the Coral Castle today.